Well, this is The Shepherd, and I'm here with Ray Blackquare. Is that right? Uh, Blackair. Blackair. Ray, Ray Blackair. Yeah. Death Valley driver. I uh, just got done listening to and reviewing uh, the, your latest, your guys' EP, Carnivore's Oath, and it seems like it's, uh, I know it will really only, it doesn't come out until October 7th. Is that true? It comes out October 7th? October 7th, yeah. Uh, yeah, Diminished Fifth Records uh, out of Halifax. Excellent. Yeah, I know, because, of course, I've heard it here. I've had it for a little bit, uh, so I've got the preview, and I pre-ordered it, so I don't even know when it came out, so I just, I'll just i pre-order it, get it out of the way. When it comes, it'll just be a present, and it is fantastic. Has it got good reviews from uh, other sources? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been well received so far, uh, which is which is pretty amazing. Uh, I know the last album had a, had a lot of really good reviews, so we were sort of... Uh, I guess apprehensive, like because it's somewhat of a different take on what we do, so we weren't sure how people were going to sort of react to it. But everything, everything we've heard so far has been pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I guess, really, really good reviews. I guess everybody's really enjoying it, and uh, we still have got that groove that we like. But everybody's really enjoying it, which is really good to hear. And you guys had an album release party. Was that last night or a couple nights ago? Uh, we're gonna have the album release actually tomorrow night at Hunter's Ale House here in Charlottetown, which I'm really looking forward to. Because actually, uh, the head of label, head of Smith, Josh Hogan, he plays in uh, Orchid's Curse, so our, they're gonna be down to party with us and a couple other friends in Eleventh Hour. So it's nice to have a bunch of guys that you, know, you can play with and that you're good friends with to uh, help you sort of celebrate. <laughs> That's got to be fun. Great for you guys. It sounds like a, a heck of a way to spend a Friday night, huh? Oh, it's a hell of a way to spend a Friday night. <laughs> have a few Couldn't beers. Ask for anything better. No doubt. Have a few beers and some great metal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it's, it's good mix, too, because, I mean, some rock, some really, really hard hit and heavy. And then uh, us, we sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're heavy, but we have a sort of a. Uh, not lighter, but it's still, it's really, a, it's, it's heavy, but we're more groove-oriented, where uh, Orchid's a lot more heavy-hitting sort of thing. Okay, so everyone gets a little taste of something different there, then. Yeah, 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 because, I mean, you always got to have a slightly, it, it, I don't, we don't like having the same style on every, every band playing the same night, you know, we want to mix it up a bit, sort of interact the crowd a lot more. Yeah, you guys, uh, just from doing a little bit of research here, you guys are award winners. Like, it seems like every year you're up for or you're winning some type of, of honor. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know it sounds like bragging, but let's let's hear it. Um, well, I've just been sort of lucky, I guess. I mean, just because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, where, we're, where we're from, like the province, I guess, uh, where we're from there, uh, we've been nominated twice for, uh, uh, well, actually, I think we won we won 25. Uh, no, we won one for the loud one, and then there wasn't enough loud for the second one. But uh, we won an award for the loud act, and then uh, we were nominated for ECMA, which is like the East, uh, East Coast Canada uh, Award. And uh, we were nominated the first time, and uh, unfortunately didn't win. But it was just great, you know. I mean, it's cliche to be nominated, sort of thing. But <laughs> I mean, just to be nominated because I mean, the East Coast has such a uh, an amazing amount of talent, I guess, and just to be nominated was cool. We got to go meet so many like cool people and stuff. And then the last one, so the second album, we actually ended up winning, and uh, it was just just an amazing experience. Because I mean, that's they're put the amount of talent on the East Coast to actually win an award against all these other, I mean, hard hit bands was was quite a, I guess, an honor you could say. It just it was just quite a quite a cool thing to, to have happen. Yeah, it's your recognition for what you guys are doing. It's got to speak a lot. It's a testament to the quality of it. You know, I'm new to it now. You know, I, like I said, I just got into Carnivore's Oak and then I am have already ordered, uh, I've downloaded order, paid for the Choke the River and I want to get Graveyard Dead. If I get all three of those, do I have the collection so far then? Uh, yeah, no, that's the three. That's the three we got. Uh, we got the first one, Choke the River, um, and then uh, the second one, of course, Graveyard Dead and then this one here and uh, they're all they're all released through through Diminished Fifth and it's just uh, 
just such a cool experience, I guess, to be able to, because, you know, a lot of times it's so hard to actually um, get that album out there to the people and stuff like that, and that, to actually have you in an EP is just sort of mind-blowing to myself. Yeah, well, you're living it. I mean, I, I, saw what, I see what you do sometimes on uh, Facebook with posts, and you're posting songs by this band, that band, the other band. I mean, you it must consume you totally. Uh, well, it's, I've always been just uh, sort of one of those guys just leave and, like, live and breathe music. I mean, uh, I don't think there's a day that's ever gone by where I, I, ha- I haven't listened to, to some music. I mean, it, it's part of my life at least, you know, 10 hours a day, whether at work or at home or something. I always have to have some music going in the background, some music going. It's just something that's always been great in me, I guess. Yeah. So what what do you do when you work out then? Do you have any workout set list or certain bands where like this is going to do it for me? This will get me where I want to go. Um, uh, that's, it was again quite a bit. I mean, I, I'm pretty, uh, I guess, open minded when it comes to music because I mean, I listen to. I mean, of course, I uh, I'm a metalhead first foremost, but I just being so open minded, I listen to anything depending on your mood from like friggin' chorus head all the way up to, uh, like, hate sphere and stuff like that. Just a lot of it really depends on your mood and what you're, you're sort of going there for, I guess. Sure. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Absolutely. When you guys were writing Carnivores Old, you know, did, was there a time where you just looked at each other and knew, man, this is pretty good? Um, well, I guess we, well, we get those little indie sort of every time we write music. Like, I found every album cycle, I guess you call it, every, it sort of has its own slight uh, atmosphere, I guess, like it has its own certain vibe, because usually we tend to write in a, in a session of writing, so you know what I mean, so we're all in the same sort of wavelength while we're writing, so like, uh, like every album, like the first one had a lot more of your southern vibe to it, um, your second one was a lot more of our death and roll sort of, uh, sort of, uh, aspect and then this one here we just sort of I guess just concentrate more on songwriting trying uh, again it's sort of kind of cliche but you sort of streamlined it a little bit more we concentrated a bit on like more of the songwriting sort of making it flow a little bit better well it's it's fantastic I, I when I heard it you know of course I read a little bit of the press release and promo and all that sometimes I like to do that sometimes I don't you just kind of want to go in fresh and you know hear my own thing but one thing that stuck, you know, kind of stuck out to me that I I really dig about it is, yeah, you guys are heavy, but you have that kind of that uh, down uh, hook groove thing going down. Yeah. That is just, I mean, that element to it makes it so much more unique. Is, is down something you guys are into? Yeah, yeah, like, um, yeah, and it's, because, I mean, we're all huge fans of, like, down, uh, uh, C.O.C., that sort of thing, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a, an amalgamation of everything. Like, the drummer and the bassist are huge, huge punk fans. Mm. Uh, me and the singer, uh, Dan, we're a lot more into the, 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 you know, old school, like the Sabbath, sort of the groovier vibe. Uh, the lead guitarist, Nick, he's a lot more into, like, the extreme metal, like the death metal sort of aspect. So I guess... When it all collides, we sort of have a common goal of what we're trying to go to, I guess. <laughs> That's a lot of ingredients to put into the uh, the soup and, and stir it up. It sure comes out well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, we're just, we're, after, after a couple of years, we're just so a lot more comfortable, I guess, writing with each other and stuff. And uh, especially with this one, because we actually had a producer on board, um, Colin Buchanan, uh, uh, who's in an amazing... Uh, a band Tape Alliance, it's not anything at all metal, but just to have that outside ear for this one really just sort of brought it all together, I guess. Great. You know, you guys uh, obviously have uh, been done have done very well in your regional part. You know, are there plans for expansion? Can you get, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I live near Chicago, so I'm always asking bands, I like, when you come to Chicago and some, even like some from Germany are like, <laughs> Chicago, we got to get out of Germany. So, you know, you guys have, to me, you have the chops, you have got the quality, it's all there. Is Will you guys push westward? Um, there are definitely plans in it. I guess uh, what we've always thought of it is, I mean, you can't, 
Yeah, you have to be realistic in goals, I guess. I mean, we're never one of those bands that, you know, you play a show and you know that's the shit you get discovered that show sort of thing, you know. You always got to take those baby steps towards something a little bit bigger, setting, you know, realistic goals, you know, we're going to do this, this time, uh, next step we're going to do this, sort of, you know, take those, take it a step at a time, every time just try and make it a little bit bigger, just sort of enlarge it each, each time as you go. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and it's hard for fans like myself because I, you know, I don't know the music industry the way that you guys do. All I know is I hear you, I hear other bands, and I think maybe some other bands that are, you know, have sold hundreds of thousands of albums. And I think this Carnivore's Oath is every bit as good as that kind of stuff. So why not? But uh, you know, that's I guess that's how it builds. <laughs> oh, well, I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate that, man. And I mean. You have to have a certain confidence in what you do as well. I mean, because we, we fully believe that there, it's, it's a solid album. You know, we could throw it against any established acts and, and, and definitely would go with it. You know, I mean, and we prove time and time again. I mean, we can even share the stage with any band we can. But, I mean, there's also that difference between uh, confidence and cockiness at the same time, you know what I mean? You always got to be grounded in that reality of, of what you do sort of thing, you know what I mean? And take it step by step. All right, let's play a little, little bit of uh, word association. So I'll throw a word out at you. Tell me what's your first okay. res- first response. Ready? All right, let's go. All right, Zeppelin. Left one? No, Led, Ze- Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin? Uh, Robert Plant. Beer. What was it again? Beer? Oh, beer. Beer? beer. Um, good cast. <laughs> football. Um, uh, football field. <laughs> First thing I thought of, I guess. Slayer. Slayer? Um, hardcore. Right, travel. Um, long roads. <laughs> Wrestling. Uh, hard music. All right, good deal. Yeah, it's just kind of fun once in a while to see what people come up with there. For people that don't know you real well, obviously that's what we're trying to do is get the, get this across to people. For those that don't know you, if they were to have a chance to see you guys at a show or pick up an album, what? how could you summarize or encapsulate yourself in a few words, although that's probably an unfair question? In a few words? Um, oh, Jesus. Um, uh, I guess just uh, oh Jesus! It's just quality, quality, good music. I mean, we are who we are. We tend to just wear everything on our sleeve, and you know what you're getting with us. I guess yeah. like we're just uh, the the beauty of it is we're just regular guys just doing what we love, and that's pretty much our honesty in the music we play. I guess just you know what you're getting, and we just try. And, Put it out there every every single time. I mean, that, that's that's pretty much the the gist of what we do. We're just four regular guys. Like we're just you know just like what we say. I guess a lot of times just a fun dirtbag just going out there on stage and rocking it up. <laughs> All right, it's fair enough there. When you were younger and you were kind of cutting your metal chops and such. What, what did you listen to growing up that really kind of formed who you were as a musician or what you thought you might be as a musician? That's actually that's actually a pretty simple question to me. There's two albums, uh, Metallica's Injustice for All and ACDC's Razor's Edge. Hmm. Those are the two first uh, hard, hard albums I heard, and uh, still to this day, Justice for All is probably personally my favorite Metallica album. And uh, same with ACDC, it's just there was something about those two albums, like, if you ever heard that, if you could go to a desert island and listen to one album for the rest of your life, mine would probably be just as well. It just had every element of what I love about heavy music. Excellent. So this question might be kind of the same thing. Maybe not. If there's a bill and there's four bands on it and Death Valley Driver is one of them, who are the other three? If you got to choose it, someone wave the magic wand. Uh, for myself, personally, it'd be down. Uh, probably Pepper, Keenan, uh, Pepper Keenan with COC, uh, Goat Horror, and probably Orange Goblin. 
Okay, excellent. Yeah, that's fun to just to see where people's minds are at. Well, we're going to let you go here. Just want you know one last thing here to the fans out there. This is Death Valley Driver. If you don't know and you haven't heard Carnivore's Oath, it's a fantastic EP. Graveyard Dead and Choke the River. That's 2013 and 2011. If I've got that right. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Any last thing you want to say to the fans while you have them for a second? Um, just a just an appreciation for for. For everybody out there taking the time, I mean everything. Music, music nowadays so oversaturated and stuff, man. I just any, any, any time anybody uh, uh, gives us some props, appreciation, everything like that, man. Just, just thank you, thank you. I guess right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that I just appreciate it because you're right. There's so much out there. I'm so it's. I can't imagine how uh, competitive it must be. I can't be. thank you enough, man, for, for taking the time out and doing this for us, man. And I'm glad you're, you're digging what you're hearing. Absolutely. And we'll talk again here. So hopefully this is just the first of many chats that we have here on We Love Metal. Sound good to you? Oh, fucking, fucking A, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time, man. We'll talk again. Yeah, you have a good one, dude. All right. Bye now. Bye.